Hold on to your tinfoil hat, squids and octopi, because I've got some Splatfest conspiracy theories for you. When was the last time you saw Marigold change her menu? Do you think that this Splatfest is meant for Marigold to find out what flavor profiles her customers like? Because I do. From the moment the Splatfest preview began, I bet you Sheldon has been crunching the numbers on which weapons Inklings have been using. Not even buying, just using. Have you noticed he's been walking off into the lobby more often? I think he's paying attention to what players are using so he can figure out what to sell. Do you think he's trying to change the metagame? If there was any way for Krusty Sean to get back into the Splatlands, I think it would be through food. He's going to see which team wins the Splatfest and then sneak back in on his truck, selling specifically the flavors that lost. Do you know why the flavors that lost? Because obviously those teams are going to feel so salty, you know, a flavor not even in the Splatfest, that they're going to want to stick to their choices more than ever. Bang! Perfect time for Krusty Sean to show up. Apparently, just the existence of Team Sour is causing Little Judd to be more on the bad guys team than ever. If you didn't know, cats aren't too much of a fan of citrus. Every single time there's Tricolor Turf War or any other Splatfest event, sales and weapons go up dramatically. Obviously, this must be Sheldon working with Deep Cut to try and get more sales. You know, maybe that's why we're having all these big runs too. Big run requires you to have knowledge on every single weapon, right? Because they're randomized Samurai rotations? The best way to practice is to buy more weapons. Oh, I understand. I thoroughly believe that the economy of the Splatlands is partially held up by the buying and selling of the stickers that go on the shell-out machine shells, specifically during the Splatfests. Just think about all the paper, all the glue, all the ink. It's gotta come from somewhere, right? In the time it takes us to play a singular turf war, there is so much data analysis and number crunching going on in the background. I wouldn't be shocked if somewhere out there, there are inklings, octolings, or even other species that are betting on our matches to see who comes out on top. Wouldn't that be wild? How much money do you think they're making off the average match? I, I bet it's more than what we make. That's why we get so little money from Turf War these days. That's gotta be it. That sugar rush that you're getting from being on Team Sweet, it's actually kind of a trap. Because what's gonna happen is you're gonna be so hyped up on sugar on day one that you're not even gonna be ready for when Tricolor Turf War comes around on day two. We're, we're just, we're fools. I'm a fool too. I'm on Team Sweet. It's too late for me. Uh.